Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to share some of my recent adventures flying over the channel on the World War II Growling Sidewinder server, uh, which turns out to be a um, very nicely populated server. There's always people playing now. It's starting to rival <coughs> Storm of War, so it's a lot of fun. Normally I fly for the Allies, uh, but um, every now and then I kind of feel the itch to jump and fly for the other side, so... Um, Here's uh, three sorties basically flown in the BF 109 K4, uh, taking from Dunkirk and flying sort of along the patrolling along the French coast, uh, looking for Allied aircraft. So here we go, the first sortie taking off from Dunkirk and headed out west along the coast. And uh, when I got to sort of the end area there, the um, Cap Grenade. Uh, I ran into this P-47 and the AAA was having their fun with him. Uh, they were shooting up a storm and then he was clearly smoking. He was, uh, I don't know why he was hanging around. Um, so I figured I'd put him out of his misery. And uh, yeah, he, I'm not even sure if he saw me. At this point he was probably just trying to, to keep his airplane flying. And it only took a few rounds and, and that was it, it went in. Um, so, uh, fortunately, uh, when I looked back, um, I saw his parachute, so the guy managed to actually jump out before, um, before the plane impacted the surface. So I was glad about that. And I kind of looked around and AAA had stopped firing, so I figured there's no one else around. But just as I headed back to the east, the one towards Van Kirk, I saw something down on the deck and I figured I'd dive in to investigate. And this is the classic one on one strategy. You, you fly high and then when you see something you dive on it, you pick up speed, you take a few shots and then you use your superior airspeed to climb up high and repeat. So in this case I misjudged badly, he sort of took evasive action in turn and um, I didn't want enough problem of course. So uh, <laughs> I went back up and uh, lined up for a second pass and uh, this time you know I got some good good hits uh, on the uh, P-47 so uh, basically in this sortie uh, it was just P-47s uh, you know, I took out a couple of them. Um, this next sortie started out the same way I headed out west and uh, it was hardly anybody uh, to be seen. The server when I logged in showed a bunch of uh, Spitfires, a bunch of uh, P-51 Mustangs, but as I flew up and down, I didn't find anybody. So I sort of flew down the French coast on the other side, and I came across this beautiful U-boat. I'd never seen one before in DCS, and it was just really uh, very enjoyable to see it. And um, so I came up uh, to Camp Rene, I didn't find anybody, so eventually uh, I headed up back, uh, back toward Dunkirk. And off in the distance I saw AAA fire uh, sort of way inland. So I figured there's got to be some kind of an enemy raid going on. I didn't know if it was bombers or you know, it was Mustangs or something or people. So I headed out that way and what it turned out to be it was um, B-17 raids, and by the time I got there, the AAA had taken out two of the three B-17s, and there was just one guy still flying. So, um, that was an opportunity to do something. Um, so, I lined up, came in from the side, took a few shots, and I think I hit him. I'm not sure if it was me or the AAA, but he's clearly venting something or smoking. I'm not really sure. One of his engines is here. So, um, I, this is not ideal position, I came in from behind, uh, I should have been wiser and extended and coming from the side of him, but it was just an expedient thing to do, I set two of his engines on fire, but unfortunately uh, I opened myself up and uh, he took some good shots at me, so, um, you know, he punctured my wing and he hit my tail group and the plane is just not flying right at this point. It's, you know, it's becoming more difficult to control. Uh, so stupidly, I, uh, you know, I 
kind of did the same thing again. I was kind of pissed at the guy and, and said, I'm taking you down no matter what. He was still fine. Surprisingly, with both engines on fire, he was still fine. So uh, I came in this time a little bit from the side, but um, still gave him a chance to take some shots at me. So a few more hits, and now all his engines are on fire. And he's definitely going down. You can see the parachutes coming out. Uh, but now I'm pretty banged up, so I really have no choice. I have to turn back, and there was no more B-17 anyway. So I head back towards uh, my airbase at Dunkirk, and it's sort of easy to spot because they have these that smoke going off, um, you know, near Dunkirk. Uh, so you can see it from miles and miles away. So <coughs> as I get close. Uh, my the airport is just to my left. I drop my gear. I drop my flaps. Uh, trying to slow myself down. Um, so all of a sudden I see AAA, my AAA, fire in my general direction. So I turn to look, and sure enough, there's a spit behind me. That's the worst possible scenario. Just when I'm low and slow with the gear down, uh, and and the spit gets on my ass. So. Um, you know, I took evasive action, he took some shots at me, um, I think he may have missed, or maybe he hit me a little. So, um, I'm not sure how experienced he was, I mean, he, but he was very aggressive, he, you know, he was constantly trying. Um, which is, of course, the game of the Spitfire, normally I would never play this game with a Spit, but I'm out of options. Uh, my plane is all backed up by that beat 17 and I'm low and slow uh, is just I was only in the landing pattern so I have no choice but to play, play this Spitz game so at this point I'm just trying to just to fly so he, had, he took a few more shots um, and I'm just being very defensive and trying to get away from him um, and he's again very aggressive but he makes a few mistakes so he's behind me again and I'm slowing down and I'm, you know I'm trying to shake him and uh, a couple of times I managed to to get rid of him so uh, there he is he makes another mistake but at this point if, if I wasn't that banged up I could have pointed my nose up here he makes another mistake he turns right into me and I take a few shots I'm not really sure if I if I hit him or not but if I did he wasn't enough um, so he made quite a few mistakes, here's another one, uh, but he, fortunately for him, he realized it and pulled over my nose, and I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't pull my nose up. Here's another chance, and once again, you know, I had an opportunity, but I just couldn't turn, you know, just a hair more, and I would have had my guns on him. I uh, just, I had some, I had some chances to, to even up the score, but it just didn't work out. Um, so at this point, I'm, I'm, so he's behind me again, and I'm just, at this point I'm thinking, I gotta climb up for altitudes, and, and just did, uh, give, give my parachute a chance to open up. But, uh, the guy's still behind me, he's shooting, so, I'm trying to evade him, but, uh, I think at this point my damaged elevator sort of quit, and that was all she wrote, so, dead. Uh, not fun. So good for that spit. Um, he caught me unawares and I paid the price. Uh, so miraculously I was resurrected and given yet another VF-109. And I took, I took off from Dunkirk on another sortie. And flying my usual pattern uh, down the coast uh, and then back up to Dunkirk. Or I guess west the work you know, and then back to East Dunkirk. And uh, once again, I couldn't find anybody. I actually flew out to the British side, expecting to find some fighters there. There was nobody. So on the way back, um, I saw this dot in the distance and it grew larger and larger and it turned out to be a B-17 raid. So on a forward pass, perfect situation, I just shot up one of them. Uh, and 
I think this is a problem with the B-17s and DCS. They just light up too easily. The real B-17s took a lot of fire before they, they lit up like this. Uh, as, it, as it is in any game, you know, you take a few shots at a B-17 and you set it on fire. I don't think it was that easy to do a lot. So as you can see, I uh, attacked the second, uh, so as I was coming out of the attack of the first one, I came across a pair of you know, two other B-17s and I hit one of them. And so now he's smoking and I see somebody down on the deck. Uh, initially I thought it was a Mustang trying to protect the B-17s, but then I saw the B-17 taking shots at him, so I knew this was a friendly. Uh, so he came after that uh, third B-17, that, uh, not the one that I damaged, but the other one, that still intact. And that B-17 shot him up. So, um, as you just saw, the first and the second B-17, the first one crashed, the second one is dropping parachutes right now, and so that's two B-17s down. And now I'm going after the third one that my buddy there tried to attack unsuccessfully. And I'm doing the same stupid thing as he did coming from behind. Uh, again, I, you know, you never learn. Um, so I just took a few shots and he's, one of his engines just went on fire. Um, but, uh, I was kind of worried because I saw another dot off in the distance, so I didn't know who that was. So I figured if I make another pass with the B-17, he's going to mess me up, and then if that turns out to be an enemy fighter, I'm going to be in the same pickle that I was in um, fighting that spit, low and slow. So I figured I'd check out who this was, and then I can always come back to the B-17, or just let it go. So I let that B-17 go, and I went after the fighter. Um, so after a while, as the fighter starts getting larger and larger, um, there goes that B-17, I must have hit him worse than I thought, because he went in almost immediately. So, as I'm coming up on that fighter, I don't see any AAA fire, so I kind of relaxed at this point, so I knew this was, this was a friendly. Uh, and it turned out, when I got close, that this was, um, uh, FW-190-D9, it was a Dora that uh, had attacked that B-17, so you can clearly see that he was damaged. One of his landing gear was hanging down and he was smoking, so he was just going home to his air base. So I kind of, uh, you know, said hi and, and uh, called it a day. I figured three B-17s is not a bad way to, to end the story. So I head back to Dunkirk and uh, set up for landing and landing at Dunkirk is always gut-wrenching it's it's such a short runway that unless you line up perfectly and you come up just right and you hit that that very edge of the runway you always come up short and and you end up in the grass and hopefully there's nobody on the other end so as I'm coming down I'm doing everything by the book I mean I'm, I was over the fence at just over 200, just under 200 knots. Wheels touched down at about 180, and I still ran out of runway and then ended up in the grass, just barely. But um, you know, if there was a fence or something, I would have hit it. So it wasn't the greatest landing, um, but that's how it is. I don't know why uh, that runway is this short. I, I wonder if it was really that short in real life. And I really wonder how those bombers could use it. I mean, did they really land at such slow speed that they could use this little space? So at any rate, we're down safe and, um, you know, I'm going to park myself down here right next to, to the bombers and uh, shut my engine off and we'll call it a day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one or I'll see you in the virtual skies.